Okay, so the previous video we had introduced the idea of increasing and decreasing, and we read those intervals off of the graph itself. Well, now we're going to start moving into what does this mean for calculus, because eventually we want to get into the point where we can identify intervals of increasing, decreasing, constant without uh, using a graph. So here's a connection between the graph and with calculus. We have a decreasing part here. We talked about before that decreasing as you move from left to right, the graph is moving downhill. Well, what does that really mean? If you're, if you're going downhill, that means it's going to have a negative slope. And since we know that the derivative is the same thing as slope, the derivative, if it's less than zero, that's a way that you can indicate that it has a negative slope and we automatically know it's going to be decreasing there. Likewise, if you have a derivative is equal to zero, that means we have a line that must be horizontal because it's not increasing, not decreasing, it's constant. And then if you have a derivative that's uh, greater than zero, that means that the slope is positive and so it'll be moving uphill as you go from left to right. So this is the connection between the graph and what we can do algebraically here. So here it is formally. Now we're going to assume that your f, your f has to be continuous on the interval and differentiable. So we have to have that condition in place first before any of these three are going to apply. So that's really important to, to note that your f has to be continuous and differentiable. Okay, so if your first derivative greater than zero uh, for all x on the open interval, then f has to be increasing on the closed interval from a to b. Also, likewise, it has to be continuous on the closed interval and di differentiable on the open interval from a to b in order for this to work. Likewise, we have the same condition for number two. If you have it less than zero, that means we're talking about this uh, decreasing part right here. That means that it's considered decreasing on there. So we have increasing, decreasing, and then this is the one for constant. If it's uh, equal to zero on the interval, then we say it's going to be constant from A to B. So this is formally how you'd write that. It's basically saying exactly the same thing as the graph that I have right here. Now that we've just talked about those rules, we're now going to talk about how to find intervals of increasing, decreasing, and constant if there's no graph provided. So here is a three-step procedure, and we're going to be doing all our remaining problems in this section. We'll be following these steps here. The first thing you're going to do is find critical numbers. So critical numbers you can find by saying the first derivative equal to zero or finding out uh, where the derivative is undefined. So we can find critical numbers that way, and that's going to basically break up our interval from A to B into smaller intervals that we're going to have to do a test. So we're going to be making a table of values when we do this. Step number two is where we're going to test a point somewhere in each of your intervals, and you're going to see whether the derivative is positive or negative. So we're just going to be getting a chart that has plus and minuses in it. And then after that, we're going to use the rule that we just talked about pre and, uh, previously to determine whether it's increasing, decreasing, or constant. Uh, based on if the derivative is positive, it's increasing, derivative negative, decreasing, if it's zero, then it means it's constant. So we're going to use that uh, in the future problems that we're going to do in this section.